welcome to our special Gen Con 2016 wrap-up show. I'm Tim the Dad. I'm Megan the Daughter. And we're going to talk about kind of the games we saw, the games we demoed, uh, games we've got uh, publisher videos on, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, just to kind of get you guys caught up and kind of take you along with what we experienced when we were at Gen Con. Yep. So Megan, why don't you start off and talk about the games we demoed? Because while we saw a lot of games, we didn't really actually get mm -hmm. to demo a lot. Nope, so first game we have on our list is the Mr. Jack board game, and I really wanted to demo this when I saw it was out. And this is a reprint of an existing, of mm -hmm. the existing Mr. Jack board game. Because I liked Mr. Jack Pocket, so I thought, oh, well, this will be cool. We can see if the board game's any different and, like, how they kind of put it in the board game setting, and I really enjoyed it, so... Um, we ended up actually demoing it with Tim Norris from Grey Elephant and Dave Taylor from To The Table. And we, so we had like two game boards set up, so I played against you, and then Tim and Dave played next to us. Yeah, because it's a two player mm -hmm. only game. So we both took turns being the inspector, and then, um, Jack the Ripper, and I won both times against you. Yeah. So I did pretty good there. And well. <laughs> I think Tim won too as well. I think. Dave. You, you can check out our video here. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we just demoed Mr. Jack, the board game version. You've seen us play Mr. Jack Pocket. Actually, you haven't because we haven't published it yet. <laughs> so this is actually kind of a rare thing. We're here with a bunch of game reviewers. Tim Norris from Grey Elephant Gaming. Hi, everybody. Megan Bresden from Dad vs. Daughter. Hi. And Dave What's up? from To The Table. Yep. So what did you guys think? Well, I'll let Dave speak first because I just beat him twice in a yeah. row. He's got yeah, some sour grief. We'll just, we'll just say that Tim beat me twice. Um, he's probably a little sharper and a little more clever than I am, but, but we did have fun. And actually, this is the first time that I played Mr. Jack. I played Mr. Jack Pocket, and this has got a little bit more going on. I thought it was enjoyable. Tim, what did you think? Uh, I had a great time. Uh, you know, I was able to play Jack, and I was able to escape. I was able to play uh, the you know detectives, and I was able to find uh, the Ripper. I got lucky, though. My very first turn, I eliminated five suspects, and it was just, man, by chance, it just worked out that way. It's really fun. It's a lot of cat and mouse and trying to play and toy around. And as the Ripper, you got to be real careful that everybody's just spread out a little bit, so you don't give away too much information, but yet still set yourself up for the big win. And Very Megan, fun game. I just beat you twice. So you beat me twice. <laughs> yes. That's because I suck. Yeah, you do. <laughs> we didn't want to say that. You said it yourself. You said so. it, mister. So the next game we demoed, all four of us again, was Four Gods, which is convenient because there was four of us. So that was by Asmodee as well. Um, it's kind of... Like, I was interested in it because of like, the tile, so it reminded me of Carcassonne with how you have to like build... Your kind of domain right you have a, a, a basically an outline of your board and you're putting your tiles inside of it but you have to do it like you have to make sure all of them line up specifically kind of like with carcassonne they all you know you have to lay them correctly and all but it was just really interesting and we did like a timed version because it was kind of getting near the end of the day and we still had stuff we all wanted to catch so we did it like in 10 minutes and we're all just rushing around to yeah. put them all in there and that's part of the game so you, you actually have this time element where you're placing tiles in real time you're you're all grabbing tiles out of a bag and placing them down you got little profits yeah uh, little profit you meeples put you're down. putting down it was yeah. fun it was, i liked the artwork cool. too because i was a mermaid yeah so that was cool here's a little clip on that one <laughs> all right so megan wins at four me. gods <laughs> against all of us losers yes <laughs> yes losers 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 i'm like so far losers. behind but she doubled Good my game. score. You like it, Tim? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was really confused the whole time, so <laughs> Dave, I would have to probably sit down and play it again. Um, <laughs> in a rush to 10 minute thing, I'm not sure. Megan? It was good, because I won. Yeah. No, that, it's always good when she wins. <laughs> as long as she wins, she's happy. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, the next one is, this was Megan's number one priority yes. going into Gen Con. She really wanted to make sure that she caught this. Uh, and thanks to Dave Taylor for giving us a, mm -hmm. a heads up on this. We didn't realize how popular this was going to be. Mm -hmm. We knew they only had 50 copies to sell per day, um, but we really didn't know that the to demo it was going to yeah. be so popular. So, and we're talking about Harry Potter, the deck building game. It's the battle at Hogwarts. Um, I fell in love with it immediately, first of all, because it's Harry Potter. This is a good game. I mean, it was so cool. I love the mechanics of it, how, like, it's a cooperative. I said that word wrong. Co-op. 
co-op. I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a co-op game, but it's with, um, two, you can scale it to two to four. I mean, we had four people at our demo, I'm probably sure. We could do two. Yeah. And we get it. And we can show you the four. Because you, you have four characters. You have Harry, Ron, Hermione, and, and Neville. Neville. Um, Should have been Jenny, I think. And each... Yeah. I mean, unlike regular deck builders where you all start with the same cards, here you have a starting deck based mm -hmm. on your character. Which is really cool. So, like, I was Harry, so I had Hedwig as my ally, and I want to say I had the Nimbus 2000 and the Invisibility Cloak as my items. I know yeah. I had the Invisibility Cloak, but and I, I was really cool. I was Ron Weasley. Mm -hmm. uh, I had Pid Pidgewidgeon. Pid Pidgewidgeon. It's their owl. Yeah. Uh, Jenny named it. And so I, I forgot mean. what my items were. Uh... You had birdie bots, didn't you? Or yes, I had birdie bots. You had birdie bots. bots, and then you had something else. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it was really cool because you you have spell cards, mm -hmm. and the spell cards act as money, and they also have abilities. Yeah. Uh, because what you're wanting to do is is fight the, the bad the guys. The bad guys, which obviously are Death Eaters, so they like pop up and all. It's just really cool, and the game scales for like each book, which is really interesting because there's like seven... Like layers, they just kind of keep adding on. Once you finish one, you move on to the next one. So we get characters from the second movie. So like we had a couple just thrown in just to show them. So we had like Lockhart come up and stuff like that. So you can just see all the different characters, and they just keep going and going. And obviously the um, difficulty will increase the harder you go. Cause but your experience of your mm -hmm. characters increased too. So yeah. the so first cards that you use, I mean, it shows them as in the first movie. But by the time you get to game seven, uh, it should be yeah, what they look like in the seventh movie. Well, I'm assuming, yeah. Well, yeah, because we, we didn't actually <laughs> we didn't get, get, see get that. that far. You had an hour block, so. Yeah, but, but you can see more cool. in our video about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, you know what? Actually, because I can get rid of this card. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to lose two. I'll just get rid of that. There you go, yeah. Okay, so I get um, one, two. I only get two of these. But. I get uh, two, three, four, five of these. I buy a crab and goil. Yeah, I get five of those, and I get to draw a card. So I actually get another one of these. So, I buy a crab and goil. You've got three, you can get the poly juice. All heroes draw a card. I got a shuffle my hand. Oh, which means I get another one. So now I actually have a card. Awesome. Woohoo! Look at you. Okay. Um, I am gonna get more, uh, more power. Okay. Hey Ross, are we done? We are... For all intents and purposes. Two minutes, you guys got two minutes. All right, all right. Come on. All right, good? Bad things. No, we need to get this. Bad things. Bad things. Oh, no. Uh, at this point in the game, though, because Basilisk is up on the table, nobody can draw additional cards. So that came after you already getting those additional cards, but going further, you're not going to be able to as long as he's out on the and table. And we need eight. He right. is a level eight. I've got six. Six. Two attacks. You had six. Let me. Can I make a suggestion? Can you get two tokens? No, no, no. I see what if it is. If I defeat the villain. If you were default. Okay. Six. What do you think, Megan? Love it. A little bit more? Good thing. All right. Bad, bad things, bad things, bad things. Active hero loses one and cannot assign more than one attack on any of the two. Okay. That's fine. So... Get two attacks, but the health goes one to each one. I can only get one anyway, so put one on Tom, and then I gain a health for that. Um, we're all doing good on health. So, so what was our final game we we demoed? Well, Actually, you demoed. I, I watched. Demoed it. I just kind of walked up. It was Keep Calm by Breaking Games, and I was just like attracted to it because I saw the Keep Calm sign, and I like British things, so I was like, ooh, that's interesting. So it's basically like Cards Against Humanity. Which I think it basically is Cards Against Humanity. It is Cards Against Humanity, <laughs> but it's British fied, essentially. So everything is like, here's a scenario of what would happen. And then, so that's like your black, your white cards, I think. Your white cards. I've only played once. So your black cards are like, um, keep calm and blah, blah, blah. So that would be the thing you would turn in. And then 
that would obviously be like, like a read them out. Keep calm and drink more tea or write a letter to Santa, I, I mean, think was one. Yeah, but they're not really that clean. So Yeah, there, there like, were some naughty ones. It's like, you know, cards against humanity. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can check it out a little bit more here in our mm -hmm. video. You think your wish is fucking stupid, and you have to pick the best response. If you have a panic card, then uh, you can read it. It uh, you can play. It tells you how and when to play it, and you just say it before you need it. So what do you do? If the genie tells you that your wish is fucking stupid. Keep calm and hate yourself a little more. <laughs> Keep calm and explain yourself rationally. That always works. <laughs> Keep calm and write a passive-aggressive note. <laughs> Keep calm and write a letter to Santa. Uh, That's my winner. So write a letter to Santa <laughs> right there. <laughs> so she got the point, and now she's going to be our next judge. We oh, always draw up to six. What would you do if you wake up in the morning after a one-night stand and realize you went to bed? That's an easy one. Each card gets expanding. All right, so now let's talk about some of the games that we actually came home with that we didn't mm -hmm. demo. Uh, first off is Hit Z Road. This is uh, from Space Cowboys and Asmodee. Mm -hmm. This is basically. I think it's kind of like the movie Zombieland. Uh, you're traveling on Route 66 and fighting off zombies. You've got cards. You've got dice. Um, actually, a real good friend of mine, uh, Dwight from Dwiggy's Demos, mm -hmm. was the one actually demoing this for Asthma Day. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to sit down with him. No. But, uh, he was super excited when I talked to him about he it. He is. He, he likes he this game. It. In fact, he is going to... Uh, demo this game for us tomorrow night at our game group. Mm -hmm. So really looking forward to that. Yep. The next game you are going to be showing off is Potion Explosion, and that's by Cool Mini or Not. Yeah, this uh, this game has gotten a lot of buzz. I think it. Uh, I don't know if it actually came out at Origins or previewed there, uh, but uh, a lot of people are talking about this. This is a game where you've got a little box that has different colored marbles that represent. Uh, ingredients for your potions and you're taking marbles out and the marbles roll down and when uh, marbles of the same color roll together you get to take them and put those into the potions that you're making then you get to drink the potions not really sure how you I drink think that's a choking hazard no well, that would be don't you, drink the marbles don't, drink the marbles, don't yes. do that uh, but this looks really <laughs> cool and like I said this is from cool men or not mm -hmm. really looking forward to uh, giving this a play that's cool the next one is Walk the Plank from Mayday Games. Yeah, this was, it was kind of funny. We were talking uh, with Ryan from Mayday, and uh, we were telling him about Play Like a Pirate. And he's like, oh, well, we got this game. So he went over and he brought Walk the Plank over to us. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, this is a game where you are playing, you're programming your moves. You're playing three cards on your turn, and you each flip over the top card at the same time, and you're trying to keep your dudes from falling off the plank and going into getting eaten by the Kraken and going to Davy Jones' locker. Uh, so you're playing cards that sometimes push the other people or pull them with you or, uh, you know, do things like that. But you don't know what the other player is going to do. So uh, you can play a card that has no effect because what you thought you might have available to you is not there. So I know you haven't really played any programmable no. games, so That'll really looking looking forward to this one. And like I said, uh, this one would be a good candidate for Play Like a Pirate Day. And the next one we have is Star Trek Panic, which I'm actually looking forward to because if you guys remember last year, I was super excited about the Star Trek five-year mission game. And you're not really even a Star Trek fan. Not really. I just kind of watch it for the hot people and the new ones. But, I mean, it's a, it's a good show. I've watched, Well, you know, this is classic Star Trek. Trek. This is. I haven't seen much of that. William Shatner, who I think you've talked to. I've, yeah. Yeah. Let's not go into uh, that. <laughs> but this, for those of you who have, who have played... Uh, Castle Panic or Munchkin Panic, and then there's one that's uh, I you said. no, there, it's a uh, like a zombie one. I can't think of the name of it. Dead Panic or something like that. Uh, and I've heard a lot of buzz about this. That they say this is the best version to get. The great thing about this, and I'll show you here in the back, is you have 
a 3D model of the Enterprise. So you actually can move the Enterprise around, you can turn it, you know, orient your different shields. You've got Romulans and Klingons coming in trying to blow you up and you put damage counters on there. Looks really cool. This was one that I really wanted to get. Um, and th this was, I would say, wasn't at the top of my radar, but I pretty much knew I was gonna get it mm -hmm. there. So really looking forward to playing this. I think I think you're gonna really like this. I've like I've never played any of the Panic games, so I don't know. I think it looks cool. I have not either. But it looks I have cool. watched it on tabletop, but I've never actually played. So looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. And the next one is a good candidate again for play like a pirate day. This is Merchants and Marauders Broadsides. Now this is a two-player only game where basically your ship and your opponent's ship are just trading shots back and forth. Uh, the mechanic is you are uh, using a deck of cards and based on what you have in your hand, what cards you play down, that determines what you get to do. Um, you can aim, hold, reload, fire broadsides, or shear off. Um, looks really cool. This was another one that they were demoing. The demo tables were full, yeah. uh, but because I'm a fan of Merchants and Marauders, this was kind of an instant buy. I knew I was going to get it. Uh, and this was uh, by Z-Man Games, but no, this looks really cool. Uh, hope you don't kick my butt at it. I probably will. In a two-player <laughs> game, only you have done that in the past. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, great candidate for Play Like a Pirate Day 2. Really looking forward to playing this one. Yep. The next one we have is Quadropolis from yeah. Days of Wonder and Asmodee. Yeah, this is a city-building game with tiles and such. Uh, and it has a, a really unique mechanic where you have certain, uh, I don't want to say, like, I don't want to call it programmable things, but markers that you're going to put against the board and where you have the tiles at. And I don't know how well you can see this here, but it'll have a number and that will tell you which tile you get to go into as far as if it's a number one, well, you take the one that's one space in. If you have the number two, you take the second tile in and so forth. Okay. And you orient it on different sides of the board. I know you don't really even know anything know about anything. this game. I don't know anything, I'm just going with uh, it. <laughs> but I know this was, uh, this has been heavily talked about. This was one that uh, has been on my radar for quite some time. Uh, really looking forward to playing this. Mm -hmm. that looks cool. The next game is one of my favorites. Really? Not that. Not I'm skipping this. that. I'm skipping yeah. yours. I'm going you're, to mine. You're, you're, okay, <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and talk about yours. <laughs> so, obviously, Star Realms is like my all-time favorite deck-building type of card game. Even over Marvel Legendary? Oh, yeah. I didn't win really? in the Legendary Gen Con tournament and kick your butt. That is true. You so, didn't. So, this is like a special place in my heart. So, yeah. this is the new expansion. It is United. So you get four packs. Well, um, they you can mix and match if you want. They have four different packs. Uh, they were selling for five bucks a pack. So we got all four because you know we have all the Star Realms cards. We do. So um, it's really cool. I'm looking forward to playing these. We haven't opened them yet because we've been a little busy. But I'm looking forward to it. There's some blob cards right on top. So that's a good sign for me. Yeah. Do you want to show them the promo cards we got uh, too? Yeah. They actually ran out of the Gen Con promo card mm -hmm. we, because we were only there for Saturday only, which was another reason why we didn't get yeah. to see a lot and do a lot. But they are the patrol cutters, which is really cool. Um, it's two money and three attack. And if you have the ally, it is four health. And it's only three money to get. So that's pretty good. It's a good card. I like it. And the artwork's cool. Yeah. But yeah. It is pretty Now I'll let you talk about your game, because you like your game a lot. Well, I don't know. I've not actually played but this But you one. like the other games in this. I do. This is Bang Duel, which is another two-player two only game. Uh, I do like Bang. I love Bang Dice. They were sold out on Saturday of the Bang Dice expansion, which mm -hmm. is the old saloon, I think is was the name of it. Uh, so I was really bummed about that, because I, I really love Bang Dice. Uh, Bang Duel, though, is more similar to the original card game where one person is the law and the other one is the outlaws. You have two player or two characters in front of you and you're playing cards to shoot at the other player and playing cards to have misses and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I hope you don't kick my butt at this one. But 
Most likely. Uh, I'm hoping that that, <laughs> that my luck with Bang will will hold out when we actually play this. But uh, was really looking forward to this one. This was on my radar as well. I uh, was really happy that I could pick this up. Looking forward to playing this. Yep. So next we have games that we um, have from publishers, and they kind of did their own little promo video for it. So we were very fortunate that we have good friends with these companies. And yeah. they were like more than willing to be like, yeah, we'll do a video, that's cool, yeah. Yeah, and almost all of these are already online, and maybe mm -hmm. by the time you're watching this, uh, they will all be out there. We call them our uh, Gen Con 2016 in-depth uh, mm -hmm. specials. So There'll we're be just, links in the doobly-doo. Yeah, we're just going to kind of show you what games we have of those, and then you can go out and uh, check out the full video from the publisher. Yep. So first we have Bloodborne by Cool Mini or Not, and I didn't know this was a thing because all I knew about was the PS game. You actually knew that there was a PlayStation game? I knew about the game. game, yeah. So I was just like, like, there's a board game of it? Like, that was kind of interesting because I just saw the banner and I was like, so yeah, that was cool. I'm looking forward to playing this though because it looks cool. Yeah, this I mean, is. It's very dark. Yeah. But so is the video game. This is going to be one I think we're going to have in our October uh, mm -hmm. series of games because it's kind of a spooky game. Yeah. Uh, which is what we'd always do every October. We always highlight the spooky games. Yep. Uh, but my great friend uh, Sean from Cool Mini or Not actually did yeah. our, our little playthrough of this. So Sean, uh, we really appreciate you and the rest mm -hmm. of the folks at Cool Mini or Not for showing this game off. It looks really cool. Yeah. So I'm excited to play that one. The next one we have a little video for is from Chip Theory Games and it's Too Many Bones. So you kind of told me a little bit about this, I think, or we just kind of heard about it a bit prior to going into Gen Con. Right. It's, uh, I think it's done with its Kickstarter, but it is still in production. Mm -hmm. um, this is what they call a dice building RPG. But it's and cool looking because it's all on like mouse pads. Yeah, like you, they're not called mouse pads, but they're mouse pads and they're super cool. You got notches where all the dice go, so the dice aren't mm -hmm. gonna, you know, if you actually accidentally bump it, it's not gonna move if anywhere. You pull an Ann Wheaton. But uh, ride. yeah, <laughs> but uh, it plays one to four, I think. Yeah. And the game comes, I think, with four character mats to begin with, and there's three other ones you can buy. But uh, check out our video on that. There's a lot more information. Mm -hmm. Kind of goes over how to play the game and yeah. really shows off the components really well. Jacob did a really good job at that. Yeah, the really, really cool. the really cool thing about that is it uses like poker chips yeah. for health. Uh, that is, I thought, was a real, real cool thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you, you know, you got your stack of health and you just, you, like poker chips. Yep, you just take the chips away. So that was really neat. But that's also kind of goes in with the mechanic with our next game that we have from Chip Theory. So it must be like their own cool mechanic. But we have, I'm not probably going to say this wrong, Hoplo Hoplomachus. Hoplomachus. Origins. Origins. So this is by Cool Mini. Not Cool Mini. Wow. Okay. <laughs> So Hoplomachus. <laughs> Hoplomachus. We're going to go with that. I, you're not going to be able to say it's, it. It's Chip Theory games. Yes, Chip Theory. There we go. So um, we have a video from Adam, who was the actual game designer. And he was really cool. And he was willing to talk to us about this. Yeah. And it's kind of very interesting. It has the mouse pads type board again for your arenas. And you have the poker chips with your health and all. And just other little items it looks really cool i'm looking this, forward to playing yeah this is a game about uh, gladiator combat mm -hmm. uh it, and it does look really neat and you've got i think everything is poker chips and you mm -hmm. have your health you've got your abilities that you use it looks really cool uh yeah. and adam we really appreciate you hooking us up with this, this yeah, super cool this looks like a, a fun game i think we're gonna enjoy mm -hmm. and i think i'll i'll be kicking your butt at this you hope yeah. you say that now but we but, never know. But yeah, it looks really neat. Yep, I'll pass that on to you. The next one we have is The Fugitive from Fowers Games. So Yeah, Tim Fowers, uh, the designer and owner of Fowers Games. Mm -hmm. uh, he kind of talked through that a little bit. And unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to look at too many of the cards. Uh, but it's another game, I think, that is going to be really cool. Uh, his other games, I loved. Mm -hmm. Burgle Brothers. Uh, and I've, I think I mentioned it before. It's in the running for my game of the year. It's that good. Really? I know you still get to play it. Um, love Burger Brothers. Paperback is another one of his games. That looks. Good. That is a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that one when we but, get that back to the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. The next one is from our good friends at Taste and Minstrel Games and Thief's Market. So this one's pretty cool. It's all about your loot and how you're gonna like 
divvy it up, but you're still going to be sneaky about it and all, so. And it's got dice. And it's got cool dice. That, yep, that's his selling point right yeah. there, the hey. dice. So dice and cards. Yep. <laughs> usually can't go wrong with that. Yep, so I'm looking forward to this, and Daniel will explain a little bit more in our video if you want to check it out. He's yep. very cool. Pass that one. The next one we have is Guilds of London, which I'm looking forward to already because London, it sounds cool. But it's also historically accurate with some of the guilds, yeah, as he, he was telling us. And yeah, Daniel from uh, Tasty Minstrel talked about that. Uh, this game, I know, I think it premiered at Origins. They had limited quantity, uh, and I think they sold out right away. Uh, looks really cool. You've got you know neat little There's colorful meeples. Meeples, meeples uh, are cool. You know, basically, you're building out London through with tiles. Mm -hmm. You're putting them around the edge of what's already been uh, been established on the on the table. So it looks really cool. Again, Daniel did a great job of telling us all about it. So mm -hmm. check out our video on that. Yep. And then the next one is Orleans Invasion. I think it's pronounced Orleans. I'll let you do the yeah. accent. That's cool. I'm butchering names tonight, so yeah. I'll just let you cover that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and that's an expansion to Orleans, which is like one of their uh, best-selling games mm -hmm. they have. We currently do not have a show on that yet, so look for that sometime in the future. Yes. But uh, Daniel does another great job of explaining that game, uh, or explaining what the expansion brings to the base game. So, Megan, you want to talk about some of the other things, other things. around uh, Gen Con? So, with Cool Mini or not, they have unusual suspects, correct? Right. Oh, correct. So it's a party a, game. Like a photo booth where you can make your own cards and dress up and do silly faces, and they like digitalized it. And yeah. you got your own little card. So we did that. And I chose the pirate hat, so, you know, for You're play promoting. like a pirate. And I've I got am promoting it. My MU hat and a boa, because why not? Yeah. Why not have the boa? So then we have those, and <laughs> then we have our freebies for the Harry Potter game, and it is a spell card, and it's uh, four of the, I forget, what, it's like money, they call called something else, but it is the spell Sunshine Daisy Bottom Mellow Turn the Stupid Fat Rat Yellow. Eh, y'all don't know that. I'm ashamed of you guys. It is from the first Harry Potter movie, Sorcerer's Stone. It is when Ron is trying to turn Scabbers yellow. So that is the spell. I'm really excited about that one. Yeah, it we got these cool. uh, because we demoed the game. But um, really yeah, if you cool. if you look at the card, this is an example of what kind of what the spell cards look mm -hmm. like. The other ones in the game, they kind of show you the way that you're supposed to move the wand, well, which I thought was a was a really cool. Uh, uh, I mean, it's accurate too. Yeah. Because I know obviously everything about that, but yeah, you it are works the Harry out Potter. though. The Potterhead. You are the Potterhead. the terminology. Head. Okay. But it's really cool because, like, with this one, obviously, there's like a bunch of squiggly lines and then puff of smoke because obviously it didn't work because it wasn't a real spell. And then we uh, have. Well, Upper Deck usually always provides the lanyards. Yes. So this so. year they're promoting the legendary Big Trouble in Little China. So I don't know anything about this, but. That's an 80s cult movie for those of you who don't I know. haven't seen that one. But. I, being uncultured, we were walking through the hall, and I'm like, oh, I think it's really funny. Jeff Bridges is on everybody's lanyard, but it's Kurt not Russell. Jeff Bridges. You're going to be very familiar with Kurt Russell <laughs> because he's going to play Star-Lord's dad in the next Guardians yes. of the Galaxy movie, which is like one mm -hmm. of your all-time favorite movies. It is. It's my favorite Marvel movie, but yeah, so that was my flub up, and you had a good laugh about that. Yeah, that, that was kind of funny. I'm like, I, what do you mean, Jeff I was Bridges? like, it looks like young Jeff Bridges from like Tron. Like, oh, and they made him look Yeah, young. I was like, oh, no, it's okay. It's that person. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about some of the other things that uh, were kind of around Gen Con. We, like I said, we were only there for Saturday. We, mm -hmm. we missed a lot. We did. Uh, and we apologize to uh, some of our other publishing friends that we did not get a chance to yeah. talk to. Um, but one of the, the bright things I noticed this year, and hopefully people don't take offense to this, but Gen Con actually on Saturday smelled pretty good. You know? oh, okay, that's not where I thought you were going the, with the, the right thing. I well, thought you were going with Pikachu's butt. So. Well, well, we can talk about that in a minute. But, you know, <laughs> you know, Gen Con is crazy because there's just so many people. They're all packed in there. Usually by Saturday, there's some gamer funk going on. Uh, and I think we only experienced maybe a handful, a couple that were bad, but for the most part, that was pretty good. 
That was that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, because normally when you get there, it's already a little smelly. Yeah, there was so it was good. Not much gamer funk going on. No, there were some cool cosplayers. I like looking at cosplayers. There were some cool ones. Obviously, they're not normally in the hall. They're just kind of outside. But there were some really good ones. A lot of um, Star Wars ones, and like I think. Yeah, you saw the little Ray. The little Ray was adorable, and then her like little brother was Kylo Ren, and it was so cute. I loved it. Yeah, and I saw I saw a couple of adults as Ray. There was a steampunk uh, Ray, which was really cool. I didn't see that. No, it was when we were passing in the hall. I didn't It was really cool though. I, I didn't actually her. notice a lot of the cosplay this year. I don't I I guess because we were in the exhibit hall pretty much the okay. whole time except for lunch. Mm -hmm. Um but so I really didn't even pay any attention to no. them. What any other cool ones you saw? No. No, I'm not really like I knew what they were. Oh, we saw the uh, what's his name? Rocketeer. The guy, no, the we guy. Saw that well, we saw Rocketeer. He was his costume was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've seen him in the, in years past. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same guy <laughs> or not. Uh, but the, the guy from the new Star Wars movie that you like, uh, we passed him. What's Finn. His name? Finn. No, not Finn. Poe. 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 Po. It was Finn's jacket because Finn wears it, but it was Poe. Yeah, Poe. He that was, was pretty that good. That was a pretty good. Uh, he was a good Poe. But I like Poe, so I was impartial too. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? No. All right. So that's our Gen Con wrap up. Like I said, check out the videos that we did with the publishers mm -hmm. uh, to get more information and get a better look at those uh, games. Links in the doobly doo. Uh, we will be doing unboxings. Yes. Uh, all these. We have a very lot. soon. Yes, we do have <laughs> a lot. Uh, so you'll be able to to get a really good look at the components then. So mm -hmm. we will catch you guys next time. Bye. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us. So what is the story about Pikachu's butt? I don't know. There, it's like at Origins, there was like this big Pikachu that was up. Was and it the same one at Gen Con? Probably. And everybody was like, hey, you know, we're behind Pikachu's butt. And everybody was posting pictures of was Pikachu's butt. Was it a Pokestop? Because I didn't check. I don't know. I didn't play Pokemon. Oh, I should have checked.